difficult to get focus on something so unobvious or inconspicuous in amongst the grass there. Natalie, as the lightning flashes there, you say, does it make any of the animals scatty? Uh, do you mean mad by scatty or do you mean scared? I don't, I think it makes them afraid sometimes, definitely. I think thunder certainly makes them afraid from time to time. Does it make them mad? Does it make them run around? No, I don't think it does. I think any animal that is scared will either attempt to move away or if it's right overhead, will attempt to find some form of cover. So they'll get under a bush or under a tree, uh, a bit like... Uh, my dad's old dog, Trubshaw, used to do. He used to put his nose in the corner and sit there whenever there was any thunder. Uh, I think while uh, these lions are certainly braver and more courageous than Trubshaw, uh, I think they also will get nervous in a huge lightning and thunderstorm. The eye is just shining in the darkness. Ah, MKL, you want to know those other lights, other safari trucks? No, they're not. They are the lights of a place called the Mara Sun, and I don't know what the other one is. So there are two places where you can stay as a tourist on the hill. So they're way away on the Olololo escarpment. In fact, they've just gone out. And <laughs> there's obviously been a power cut. Alice, have you still got power? There's a power cut at camp as well. Luckily, we have an uninterrupted power supply system that works some of the time. Uh, it seems to be working now, which is excellent. It's interesting. Bad luck, those staying at the Mara Sun. <laughs> okay, now we've got some calling coming up. Uh, Craig, let's just go across the others because he will probably not move if the others go up hunting. He will probably just lurk. There's yeah, some more lightning in the background. The generators have kicked in at the <laughs> places I was talking about. Okay, we're going to have to move now. Just need to get around the top there. To move with us because of the rock field. Oh, they've stopped there. They seem to have stopped. Yeah, they've gone to sleep. We won't need to move just yet. He's giving a little bit of phlegm and grimacing. Now, this will tell us quite quickly if he is related to these lionesses. I think on reflection that he probably is. But that phlegm and grimacing indicates that he's attempting or certainly testing whether or not these lionesses are ready to mate. And if the male tolerates that, I'll be amazed. The big male, I mean. That is obviously a male. He's playing her very, very close attention in the same way that a male follows an estrus female. And now marking his territory quite close to her. For him to be roaring, at this age uh, is, is unusual. He's in nowhere, he's nowhere close to being a territorial male lion yet. He's not nearly big enough, but he may have tacked himself onto this other big male. Let's go just to the right there, Craig, and see if we can't spot some of the others. Can you see the others there, Craig? Oh, we've got one there looking there, okay. 
All righty, we're not going to move from here. We're going to wait and see what these lions do. In the meantime, we're going to go back across to Byron, who's wafting his spotlight around like Sholto.